Hello to everybody watching this thing once more. Welcome back to Mega Bellum with a good pack of starting units. Giant specialist with uh, crawlers and sledgehammers. And my opponent, Oliver Anseth here, starts with supply specialist with sledgehammer arclight. I think this is a fairly balanced matchup at the beginning. Not the massacre, but the last matchup was. Anyway, I go for my standard formation, crawlers behind the sledges, behind the tower, go for some additional marksmen because everything here is bad against them. Uh, I Even if he like goes for beginning wasps or for, for round one wasps, I can hit them with the marksmen and won't instantly lose the round. My opponent does go for some fangs here. Three arc lights, two tanks and two sets of fangs against three packs of crawlers, two tanks and two marksmen. Based on what I'm looking at, I think I should be winning. I'm pretty sure I won the first round simply because the tanks are very good chaff clear at the beginning. And uh, the crawlers, like, I think crawlers are just better chaff at the beginning at least than fangs. Could be wrong though. In any case, uh, let's just speed this up because these fights tend to be fairly slow. The marksmen, yeah, the marksmen are just cleaning house. This marksman unfortunately doesn't get the final tank, but that kind of also allows me to get tower XP. And the marksman walks over to kill the sledge. Perfect 1.0 on the speed. I like that. I like that a lot. Round number two. Stormcrawler, Scorpion, Fire Badger and Rhino. Actually, two Fire Badgers. I go for the Stormcrawlers. My opponent goes for the Scorpion. Likely, I would say, to counter the sledges. That is where he's lacking right now. But honestly, I think as soon as your opponent has this tech on his sledges, scorpions as a counter to sledges are kind of not really that much a thing. Unless you have so many problems that sledges already can't deal with, that you don't want to carry sledges anyway. My opponent is adding problems here that sledges can't deal with in due time. He adds a lot of fangs. But I guess that also is a bit countered by the Stormcrawlers, because the Stormcrawlers can definitely deal with uh, fangs. Yeah, let's see how this one goes on. So there's more chaff in the way. My opponent's chaff clear is locked onto sledges, so these crawlers can very effectively destroy some of these fangs. Marksman is shooting the Scorpion, which I'm not entirely sure I like, but I guess it's something. Both marksmen now locked on late chaff here doing absolutely amazing work. And that should hopefully be it. Maybe. This is a, a marksman that is not going to kill all of this. But I have stormcrawlers left. This one whiffed entirely. I will get a tower degradation soon-ish. Yeah, and under the tower uh, degradation there's just no hope for these sledges to push the stormcrawlers. But I level above them. Looking at my opponent's board, this definitely looks like either it's going to be mass sledges or uh, carry arc lights. Incredibly, my opponent does not pick the intensive training here. Instead, he adds on more arc light, which kind of and goes for arc light range, which completely reveals the plan. But I do go for a bunch of sledges here. Because these sledges, uh, eh, not sledges, what am I talking about? Stormcrawlers. Because they are doing good work against fangs, even in the late game, assuming the opponent doesn't just anti-missile everything out of existence that these stormcrawlers fling in this direction here. Missiles come in and do actually do very significant damage to the scorpion already. That pack of fangs has absolutely gotten deleted, but at the same time, all of the Stormcrawler misses are kind of going onto the same pack, so it's not all that ideal. Leveled Sledges here against leveled Marksmen, but the Stormcrawlers are only level 1, so they kind of just tickle here. Scorpion did go down. That Marksman, I guess, is already level 3. Yeah, it was doing good work, and it is still doing good work here to this day. Stormcrawlers take another tank out. Let's speed this one ahead. So my looks like my opponent is getting another tower debuff. But I will very shortly get one as well. Yep. I guess even under tower debuffs, this would have been enough damage to finish the last few arc lights. 
Smart Marksman. Rhino Assault. Smart Marksman, I think, is pretty lucky for me. I have Marksman that already started leveling. And this will only accelerate it. I think my opponent skipped. Instead, he goes for a charge shot on the Arc Lights. He now has one level 3 Arc Lights and has a whole lot more Arc Lights. Uh, meanwhile, I am definitely fully aware of my, what my opponent is doing. He uh, revealed his strategy. And I have just enough money to drop two fortresses in this round, which I promptly do. I also have, uh, probably should have sold one of the tank sets here. But now they're just kind of giving XP, but what would I have used my money for anyway? Maybe for Splash, honestly. But uh, yeah, let's just watch the match here. So the marksman right now, there's only two marksmen. Um, the fortress is definitely tanking a lot. But there's also steep damage coming in from these charge shot arc lights, especially this level 3 one here, which is doing over 3600 damage already. Takes out the marksman with one hit. Stormcrawlers are kind of wasting their rounds. Shooting everything at this tank. And before the next salvo of missiles come in, comes in. The arc lights destroy the tower. There's more missiles incoming. And in the end the fortress tanks for the stormcrawlers. And I guess that would have been enough health to push in anyway. Assault fortress comes out. And that is extremely lucky for me. More HP, faster movement speed at the cost of a bit of range. I will take that trade. Like, it's not an amazing thing, but I think it's a definitely pretty decent thing. My opponent's arc light here is level 4. I level this fortress because, well, more HP for less money overall. I do drop additional fortresses. I think maybe I should have not leveled this fortress and instead leveled one of the fortresses that I bought. So that was a slight mistake on my part, and with the remaining 50 bucks, I do go for additional movement speed. So these fortresses are literally twice as fast as normal now. My opponent goes for shields on the fangs, but I do already have Stormcrawlers out to deal with that. He also has an absurd amount of arc lights and no anti-air, although he has this button here. That button is definitely worth a thought or two. Chaff clear, once again, mostly at least, locked onto the giant. Not where you want your chaff clear to go. I have some late chaff here covering the fortresses, but unfortunately it wasn't early enough. So the fortresses get taken out by the arc lights and the scorpion here. Scorpion got taken out, but this looks like it's going to be around for my opponent. The fortresses were not enough to win it over. And he will deny a lot of XP from me and in turn get some juicy Stormcaller XP. So that round definitely didn't go in my way. Even with Assault Fortress. Advanced Firepower Control. Uh, he actually goes for the shield. I go for the Sticky Oil Bomb. Throw down some oil here with the thought of maybe going for fire. I do go for Splash for high explosive ammo on the Stormcrawlers and drop some additional ones. I did sell... Um, I think I sold the Sledges that I had over the last two rounds. And I do upgrade these Marksmen. I, I definitely think it's worth it. If they get to shoot these Arc Lights, they're going to be sitting real pretty. Although they don't have all that much more range. It's 7 units of range. The opponent does shield... I don't know if any more devastating combat powers were coming out, but uh, he might just expect me to oil and fire. I don't think it is uh, unexpected at this point. I just go for some shields on my fortresses, which should protect me nicely and add a lot of extra HP that he needs to shoot through. Health upgrade, even more HP, speed once more, and we'll see what happens here. 